We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Monday. We are starting out another week. Mondays are always kind of tough because it's the start of the week and a lot of things are going to be happening, but uh, I'm doing this on Sunday night, so I don't know what's happening Monday as yet. We'll be talking about that stuff on TikTok and tomorrow's show and all of that. Um, but I am I feel fortunate that we have yet another guest. We've had a good run of guests and we have a guest that we had on recently, and now he's back. His name is Matt. He's from Ohio. And uh, Matt, I told you I was going to give you a hard time. Matt was on the show. It went real well. Got a few people making nice comments. Now Matt's getting a little cocky. He says, let's come back. <laughs> and so, uh. <laughs> and, so and, I, and I, I'm happy to have him back because uh, – it was a pleasant conversation, I think, informative for a lot of folks, and a lot of folks got a lot out of it. So what's happening in Ohio these days? Anything positive? Jim Jordan resigning? Anything like that? I hope that's breaking news. That would be the best. Yeah, it would be. But uh, Yeah, I'm coming to you live from my new dining room table. So Your new dining room table. That's what's going on in my life. Well, I met your wife before yeah. we started. The old lady Love found her. a real good find today. Oh, she, 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 she's like my wife. She goes thrift stores and estate sales and all that stuff. Is that what your wife does? Or did she go brand from new her stuff? phone? Oh, from her phone. That's a fucking millennial <laughs> for you. Sit in your <laughs> chair and order it on the fucking phone. Jesus Christ. Anyway. Um, we had all these plans made of what was going on today. And she come running out of the bedroom and said, Hey, I found this and we got to go get it. It's free. We can't pass it up. So there that's what we did. Nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, since we're talking about Ohio and since we mentioned Jim Jordan, I want to talk about this and see what you think about this. Now we've had this whole situation with, sure. uh, with uh, the Republicans wanting to impeach Joe Biden. And at the top of the list, in charge of all of this, Jim Jordan, James Comer. They kept telling us, oh, we don't have any evidence yet, but we're sure something's there. We just got to keep digging. And they have this, this witness that is lauded by Jim Jordan and James Comer is absolutely impeccable as far as a witness. Then we find out the witness is... Uh, a liar, and he's indicted by the DOJ. And if that weren't bad enough, we find out that uh, he's getting his information from Russian intelligence. Now, everybody's talking about, well, they got to stop uh, impeaching him and such. And I think the big story here is that somehow Russian intelligence has infiltrated FBI, but more importantly, Congress. Now, I said when I first heard this that Man, if these guys knew about this beforehand, that's a big fucking problem. Turns out they knew this guy wasn't recommended to, they didn't want them to mention publicly this witness statements because it wasn't solid. So now here we are. <clears throat> I don't know if they're, they're going to continue to impeach Joe Biden. And if they do, that might be even more problems for them. But for me, this sounds more like conspiracy. Not on the Democratic side, but on the Republican side. Your guy, Jim Jordan from Ohio, and James Comer and <clears throat> Grassley from Iowa. They were all in the mix here. What, what, what do you thought? When you heard that story, what was the first thing that came to mind for you? I would say that it makes... They're trying to stick whatever they can on Joe. It doesn't matter what it is or where it's coming from. And even Great. though they knew that it was a Russian coming possibly from Russian information, it, it wasn't going to stop them. It wasn't going to let them. They were just going to roll with it because, you know, and it's all the way from the top down. Right. Big Orange Daddy loves Putin, so it just trickles all the way down to to the underlings and then here we are and just a sad real sad state of affairs well and i think you hit on something there that's that 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 you may people need to understand 
uh, immediately people are going to say, oh, they're in bed with the Russians and and uh, their Russian assets and all that stuff. And, and they, they very well could be. But I think it's more of what you said. They are so desperate to get something on Joe Biden. They're willing to take it from anywhere, from anyone, right, wrong, true or false. It doesn't matter. They were just so desperate they would grab onto anything. Unfortunately, they walked themselves into a very, very serious situation. If the DOJ comes out and says, this sounds a lot like conspiracy, the insurrection, impending insurrection indictments they may be getting are minuscule compared to what this fucking thing would turn out to be. Right. And I, you know, it's them trying to come on Biden with something, come to get him with something. And then it's also... They got to realize in the back of their minds, whether they're rational or not, they know that they're screwed. Yeah. They know that they're going to fall and they're just taking every little bit they can with them. And it's, they know it's a matter of time. They have to. Well, I mean, I don't know how you don't. And, and, you know, the thing about it is somebody made a point and I hadn't thought about it until um, I heard this. They're acting like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change anything. They're still, uh, he's still guilty of whatever. Um, but if they know the information is fake and they know the information comes from Russia and they know we know all of that, if they, if they simply continue the impeachment, they're continuing to break the law. Because they're using information that came from Russian intelligence to try to impeach a a sitting president. So they got a problem now. That's one of their selling points going yeah. into 2024. And they're damned if they do and damned if they don't. They aren't going to get over on uh, Biden if they back off. But if they don't back off, DOJ might say, you know, fuck enough's enough. Let's go with the conspiracy indictments. So they're in really a tight spot. It's 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 intriguing. It's very intriguing. I just, you know, how far are you willing to take this crap before you just say, oh, yep, we screwed up, which they're not going to. They're just going to fall off the cliff. But the article I saw that uh, validated, I guess, what uh, this inquiry is, is going to happen is Jamie Raskin come out and just said, this thing's dead in the water. Their lead witness just came out and he's a known liar. He's getting Russian information. That's bullshit. And it's, it trickled all the way through. So they're sick of hearing it. They're sick of hearing it. They're sick of dealing with it and all that, you know, wasted time and money. And it's just, it ain't going to happen. Well, Representative Jerry Nadler, a Democrat, uh, asked that there be an investigation. And I think a judge or a prosecutor that was tied to this whole thing. Do you think it comes down? Do you think they will push for an investigation into Comer and uh, um, and Jim Jordan? I mean, given that they presumably knew this was true and it's clearly illegal. Do you think they should push that through? And do you think Merrick Garland as the the balls to wade into that. I don't think Garland has the balls to do much of anything um, unless his hand is completely forced. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like we've said before, the shit we're seeing now could have been done and over with and gone. It could right. have been dealt with already, but he's too worried about what everybody around him thinks. And he's... You know, if we had, uh, what's her name, instead of sitting on the sidelines, Amy, Amy Klobuchar, she had that job. I agree. Bam, I agree. bam, bam, bam. We would have been done. There's any number and of I, You know, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. The only person that I think would be as good or maybe even better than Amy Klobuchar is just Katie Porter. That is a dog with a bone. Katie. She's great. She'll shake that shake that uh, dog by the neck as long as she fucking has to. So um, if they're smart, they will let this impeachment thing go. But the problem with Republicans is we know they will double down, triple down, 
quadruple down until they crash headfirst into the earth. It'll be interesting to see what they decide to do in this particular situation. You would hope they're smart enough, but I've seen no evidence that they are. Right, right. And let me ask you, have you ever seen anything like this happen on the other side of the aisle where? No. You know, we just, or we, I say, you know, the Democrats knew that something was fishy and they were just kind of like, well, we're going to keep riding with it. Maybe this, whoever we're after is going to buckle, you know, or do they kind of step back and go, all right, you bring up some good points. We'll take another look at it. We'll bring it back to the attention when, when we think we're ready. Has well, it always the, kind of been that way? Uh, well, I think the best comparison I can give you is is back when Nixon had his problems. And, and let's be honest, what Nixon did was like one hundredth of what uh, Donald Trump did. But it got so noisy right. yeah. in the media and it was so obvious. And then there were tapes. It got so bad that the Republicans themselves went to uh, went to uh, um Richard Nixon said, look, man, you're going to get impeached. You're going to get convicted. You need to resign. So his own people. We can't saw stop the right- it. It's just going to happen. Yeah. And, and they were ready yeah. to vote against him, too. So they saw the writing on the wall and they pushed to get it done because that was the right thing to do under the circumstances. That would have been the right thing to do for the Republicans of this era with Donald Trump. But they failed. They kept doubling down and tripling down and. And this is where they find themselves in a fucking mess. So we've never seen this much scandal and criminality and corruption where everybody just says, nope, didn't see it. I, you know, we've had tough times in this country, but never anything like this. And this is why, you know, a younger guy like you needs to remember this because this is going to be a hugely historical time that your kids are going to ask. Oh, yeah. To have lived through this is going to be something you remember long after us old folks are gone, because it it's it's not only impactful for this country, but for the entire world, clearly. If I ever have the opportunity to be face to face with McCarthy, I don't think it'll ever happen. But if I will, I would just look at what the hell is the matter with you? Yeah, I think a lot of these people really. Are- well, I think a lot of these people, once it's all over with, I, it's it's as if they don't think this is going to end or go away. But when it does, you're going to have a lot of people that are are shamed for their behavior the last seven years. And, you know, there, there's going to come Liz a point. Liz Cheney ought to just smack him upside his head. Yeah, Liz Cheney, any of them. Uh, but, but you, you know, the thing about it is, and I've had, they're going to come to you and me and everybody else and say, You know, it was a mess. It was a bad time. Let bygones be bygones. Let's move on and move forward with the country. And maybe I'm petty, but I'm sorry. I can't forgive what I've seen to this point. Now, if you tried to steal records from the Democratic headquarters, that's still pretty stupid for a president to do. But when you literally are trying to overthrow the country, I don't see any forgiveness yeah. for that at all. I can't forgive you for that. Going along with it, answering texts, coming up with plans, you know, stealing documents, having surrounding yourself with these people that are just going to let our country do fall to something like this. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's it's my stomach. But when when everything quiets down and Trump's out of the picture, you know, 10, 15 years from now, you know how much length they ought to get. And um, I'm going to give you about this much. Yeah, I'm going to trust you about this far. And if you yeah. go this far, you're done. <laughs> you're yeah. done. You're out. We're not going to let it happen again. We're going to call a special election. You're done. You know, the funny th- the funny thing is, is that in addition to doing a bad job in Congress, uh, Donald Trump under investigation, um, being charged with felonies, all those things, the Republicans can still find ways to shit on themselves. 
the Roe v. Wade, overturning Roe v. Wade. That may be the most devastating thing they ever did to hurt themselves. It cost them in 2022. It'll probably cost them in 2024. And if that weren't enough, then they have this IVF thing in Alabama where this Supreme Court justice says, yeah, frozen embryos are full-fledged children, <clears throat> which is absolutely ridiculous and outrageous. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and now what, what are they doing? They're going, oh, shit, I don't want anything to do with that. Donald Trump, uh, everybody's backing away from it. But the problem is, is the reason we have this IVF decision was because they overturned Roe v. Wade. Without them doing that, we wouldn't have had this decision. But they just keep stepping on their own dicks. It's it, it's it's uncanny how they keep doing this. Yeah, if you needed any more evidence of how stupid Tommy Tuberville oh, is, Jesus. just yeah, just walk, listen what this idiot keeps saying. Well, the ironic thing about Tommy Tuberville or Tuberville or whatever his name is. I call him Tuberville. <laughs> that's I think that's what it is. But he was asked about this, about this thing, and clearly he had no idea what the decision was. And he said, I'm all for it, because he thought he should be all. And then when they told him it what it was, then he backed off of it. But you know the worst part of this is this was an Alabama Supreme Court, and he's a fucking Alabama senator. If anybody should know, it's that yeah. dumb motherfucker. And he didn't. He didn't know. He probably still doesn't fucking know. It's, I, I think that's one of the most disappointing things I've found. It's uh, a hard thing. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go look at that. It's a conversation for another day. Well, the story's today, bitch. You need to talk about it. And this is your fucking job. But but the saddest thing I've I've seen, or the most disconcerting thing I've I've seen since the rise of Donald Trump, and I was ama I was surprised by the fact of how many truly profoundly stupid people we have in this country, and I'm not just talking about the, the people that vote. I'm talking about people in in in, in government, people making more money than you and I right. because they're special and they're elite. And they're dumber than us. There's nothing worse for me than taking orders from somebody who's fucking dumber than me. It's, it, it makes no sense. But I had no idea that we had this many dumb people in this country. Yeah, the voters are one thing. And buying into all the bullshit that Trump spews is one thing. But to hear... People that you thought would represent you, the people you thought would have your back and do things for the people. And they just, they just, they say that because it's easy to say that, but they don't know. They don't know shit. Well, yeah, the, you know, they get in. I could go up to that Max Miller I brought up last time I was on here. I could ask him, uh, you know, why. Uh, any, I can't come up with something off the top of my head, but you know, he doesn't know shit. He doesn't. Well, and you know, he, he's voting for MAGA. All you have to do is what is it about MAGA that's going to help this country? That's all you have to ask him. And he can't answer it. Not with a legitimate, truthful question, but. Yeah. What's one thing you passed in our Ohio Senate that's going to help these people out? Well, you know, you you have the same feeling for Max Miller that I have for Dean Phillips. You maybe heard me talk about him. He represents me oh, in yeah. my state, and he's trying to undermine Joe Biden, and he's a Democrat. What the fuck are you doing? You're a fake you, Democrat at that point. You're a you're a yeah. You're a, you're just a politician troll at that point. Yeah, and I think it's more that he's egotistical and he's trying to benefit himself uh, and he'll do whatever it takes. And that's that's the intriguing thing to me about this is all these Republicans and these other idiots, they will literally do anything to get a benefit. And they honestly believe that we're stupid enough not to catch him or not to see what they're doing. That's That's the insulting part of it to me. These people treat us like we're know-nothing, ne'er-do-well serfs that they can dictate to. I mean, we see it with Republicans. 
75% of the people support Roe v. Wade, but they instead said, we're going to shut it down because we know better. Now, if I'm a Republican, I'm going to get pissed off about that. You haven't considered my opinion at all, and you just shove this shit down my throat. Why people don't stand up and say, hold on a fucking minute. I think they will in the election in November, but they sit still and they just pick their side and they take their beating and they're happy to get it. Yeah, I agree with you on that 100%. It's just uh, until they initially take that beating, they're not going to stop. They're not going to go away. And that's just the, another reason why independents, that, Democrats, whoever else, just get your ass out there and vote. You can't sit back and just bitch that, about stuff. Get out and vote. That's the amazing thing is you're absolutely right. They will not learn a lesson until that blue wave hits in November. And then they will stand there with their mouth agape, wondering how it happened, when we all know how it happened. I mean, if you're talking about the Republicans in the House of Representatives, they are the most unserious, silly fucks I can even imagine. We've got these fucking guys. Congress took two weeks off while we're supposed to be figuring out a budget plan a uh, spending bill so we can get that signed. Never in our history has it taken this much work and these this many extensions to get a simple plan done. It's always been pretty simple up until the time of MAGA. So they're on vacation for two weeks. They're coming back today to go to work. They got four days to figure something out to uh, make sure the country or the government doesn't shut down. This is how unserious they are. It apparently isn't important to them, and they want to play this standoff game as long as they can. And then at the last minute of the last day, they'll they'll come up with some bullshit just to push the goalposts back farther. It's it's a re it's really pretty frustrating, actually. You know, I don't make near what these people make. Right. Even take out the dirty the dirty money aside, what just they make is their salary being there, but I show up Monday through Friday, unless I can't get out of bed or one of my kids is sick. That's about it. Or maybe some other crap that comes in my way of uh, something I got to schedule or whatever, but right. how many days do these assholes got to have to, to take off? I mean, you know, two weeks for what? Yeah, for nothing. They just decided to do it. I mean, this wasn't even a, a holiday break or anything. They just decided to do it. I mean, think about this. Uh, no matter what job you do, if you look at the House of Representatives right now, since they took control um, three uh, two years ago, year and a half ago or something like that, they have done nothing. They've accomplished nothing. And they they aren't ashamed by it at all. How How, how many months... Could you go doing your job, producing absolutely nothing and be able to keep your job? Probably exactly. three, probably three days. Yeah, if I started that crap on Monday, I'd probably be getting talked to on Friday for sure. Yeah, no question. Um, so so we were they're going to walk this up to. Uh, to Thursday, which or maybe Wednesday, which is the first. Today is the twenty sixth. Yeah, it's Friday. Maybe Friday's the first. Friday's the first. So they'll walk it up to the last minute on the twenty uh, ninth, um, and they either have to come up with a full resolution or another continuing resolution, which would be three or four. Uh, it's incredibly frustrating for them to say, "Ah, oh, we just haven't had enough time. We can't come together on this." Uh, so we're going to have to push it back again. And I have a feeling that's what they're going to do, because as long as MAGA pulls any weight um, with these fucks, they're going to be too scared to go against them. And already Mike Johnson has gone against them. Um, what, do you, what, what do you think? Do you think they'll have a continuing resolution or they'll actually come to some decision? No, they're going to have another CR. It's if they don't, it'll surprise me. If they go get a full thing done, that'll surprise me. 
Well, I was looking at something last night and apparently they had been talking and uh, as of last night, they had nothing. They had absolutely zero. You know, what troubles me is that there's a lot of people, I, I get a lot of DMs and emails and, and, and such and comments on the post. And the idea of the government shutting down, there's a lot of people scared to death about that. You know, they won't get checks. They're, you know, there's a lot of federal employees that will be out of work for God knows how long. And people are truly afraid. And these politicians that are supposed to be working for us don't care about that. They want to play their little political games and show their muscle and 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 keep people hanging by a thread up until at the last minute they they come up with something. And that that that's what's so fucked up to me. It's always so over dramatic. Just fucking do something. Don't worry about Joe Biden winning. How about doing something for the middle class or the people that are the backbone of this country? Why is it so hard for Republicans to want to get something accomplished for the middle class? That's that's the most frustrating thing to me. I, I know I'm a young guy, but I don't remember them ever doing something for the middle class. I mean, they say they're always gonna, and then, you know, we get shit like this. And but, yeah. I, you know, Trump got in there in 16 and then they had the midterms in 18. I'm pretty sure there was like two shutdowns in there. Yeah. So what the hell, what are you doing? It's just well, like, I you know, when Ken Buck stands up there and starts yelling that give me one thing, I got to go back to my voters and say that we got done. That says a lot, even if you don't like the guy, but he's pleading his case. He's what the hell are we doing here? People? Well, you know, and that's one of the biggest problems for the Republicans at this point. I keep hearing people saying, Oh, the Republicans could win or Donald Trump could win. They've got a lot to overcome. They've got a lot of, failures, uh, scandals, problems, court cases. But their biggest problem is unity. They don't have it. They're, they're basically three parties within one. You got MAGA on one side. You got people trying to yeah. be normal on the other side. And in the middle, you got people, a third, that don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't like Trump, but they're too afraid to say anything. And they might still vote for Trump, you know, and and. If you're separated and divided like this, you can't win a fucking election. You can't raise money. You can't uh, come together with any kind of uh, message. And and this is this is one of the reasons why I don't think they have a chance. They're just a chaotic fucking mess right now. They can't accomplish anything. No. And um, earlier tonight. I missed it Saturday. I, I honestly completely forgot that the South Carolina primary was going on, but I turned on the, uh, I'll throw her a plug, the Rachel Maddow podcast, yeah. which is just her show in podcast form, but they declared victory for Trump and all that. And he gets up there and you could swear you're listening to something he might've won for, you know, back when it's all the same crap yeah it's all it the same bullshit and then people just start cheering and then they go back to the panel and they're like well you know he says we don't know where all these people are coming from that cross over and from mexico but then in the same breath they come from mental institutions and they come from prisons and they yeah. come from terrorist groups and it's like well you just said you didn't know where they came from <laughs> Well, Donald, Donald Trump, uh, we can talk about that later, about his mental... He's a blubbering uh, idiot, and he's keeping running his mouth, saying shit wrong, he has to look at a list to identify his children yeah, yeah. off the top of his head. Melania is nowhere to be found. She said peace. Yeah, no shit. She's she's Audi. Uh, but but that's, that South Carolina primary is an interesting thing. He comes out like he made this big win. He won by 20 points. Yeah, that's a big win, but it's Republican against Republican. The real interesting thing about the South Carolina 
primary is that as much as 60 percent voted for Donald Trump, but more concerning for the Republicans is 40 percent didn't vote for Donald Trump. That doesn't show that he has a ton of support. And and the second thing is, you know, because if there had been more people in the primary, he wouldn't have been at 60, he'd probably been at 45, still won, but he, he, he would have lost out some. But I heard a figure, there, there apparently was a poll, and I don't trust polls completely, but there was a poll in South Carolina amongst Republicans. So I presume the Republicans were telling the truth. And of the Republicans in South Carolina, 25% of them said they will not now or ever vote for Donald Trump again. If you've got 25% of your own party that aren't willing to vote for you, how do you win a general election? You fucking can't. Not one Democrat's voting for you. So no. that right there no. cuts, you know, and then your 25 doesn't want anything to do with you. And then the scragglers that are left are going to vote or are going to stay home or they're going to. Yeah. So you got your base and your base isn't shit. Now they're either too scared to come back out or they're just, they moved on in their lives and said, screw this. I can't keep throwing $25 a week when he's just going to spend it on legal fees, you know, or whatever. And <laughs> how the fuck am I going to buy go. Copenhagen and, and, and moonshine? If I keep sending this dickhead <laughs> money, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen here, but where uh, are my hookers and that are all going to come from? If he keeps, <laughs> if he keeps taking it. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just subsidizing this guy's uh, <laughs> habits for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> but, but, um, this is why when people always talk to me, oh, I'm afraid he's going to win. Give me one way he's going to win. Give me one path where he wins. There is wow. no path. What's that? Well, the com oh, no, I was agreeing with you. Yeah, well, give me one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, uh, the economy goes better when there's a republic. It's never gone that way. No, it Ever. never has. It never Ever. has. Now think of it this way, too. And I keep going back to Obama because he was just such a big part of my life right. and uh, what he was able to do. But if, if he would have started on even like a level playing field and not trying to fix basically a broken United States at the time, where he would have started from there instead of having to fix all of Bush's shit, get the economy rolling again. He handed out stimulus checks. Not a lot of people remember that, but it's yeah. like, you know, just well, crazy. Just and, crazy. And 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 Obama had one thing going against him that I, I don't know that any other president had going against him um, to this extent anyway. In addition to having to start from a hole and dig his way out and bring us back to life, which he did, the entire time he was doing that, he had to deal with the Republican Party whose only job was to obstruct and stop and wreck everything he did. I mean, people complain about the uh, uh, Obamacare because it doesn't have this or it doesn't have that. What people have to remember is what Obama and the Democrats came up with at first was pretty good, but they wanted to get it passed. So they had to compromise with the Republicans. And the whole way down the process, the Republicans were trying to sabotage Obamacare because it made them look good. So we got a worse Obamacare, yeah. not because of Obama, but because of the Republicans. So Obama did pretty well with with these people putting up a brick wall at every turn. And and Joe Biden's suffering through the same thing. They don't do same anything. Thing. They're just trying to stop them. And, that, and, you know, that's like running against the fucking wind, man. It's not easy. That's why it was so heartbreaking when they did what they did with the uh, the border bill. Yeah, you put three things in there at once. You took four and a half months of work of actual compromise that seems like doesn't exist anymore between both sides of the aisle. You got something done, and they just Mike Johnson just kills it because Daddy said to kill it, and it's it's just sad, really. You well, know how many of the amount of people you just screwed over in that thing. 
including Republicans, including themselves, because they got pretty much everything they wanted in it. And I even said that before we got to that point. I said, you know what, no matter how they negotiate this thing, if they give Republicans everything they want, they'll still turn it down because they don't want to give Joe Biden a win. Giving Joe Biden a win is more of a concern to them than fixing the border, which is totally contrary to what they've been telling us for seven years. But now it should be pretty clear what what their intentions are. But, you know, that that's 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 the whole thing about the Republicans. Again, they have all these talking points that they want to use to stain Joe Biden coming up on the November election. Oh, he's a criminal. He's taking money under the table. Well, that's out the window because we know Russians have been feeding the information to that. The border plan, he's got wide open borders. Joe says, let's do the border bill and I'll shut down the border. And they say no. Every talking point that they've had against Joe Biden, they fucked up. And now they're responsible. Every one of them's been turned around in front of them. That I don't, I don't even. And then you see all these stupid state representatives t- trying to take credit for yeah. like CHIPS Act or, you know, they'll go out there and say, oh, I brought in all this money. Well, didn't you vote against it when it was brought to your attention the first time or <laughs> I forget who it was, some lady down in Florida and the dude was just calling her out, calling her out. She keeps trying to go on about some $40 million <laughs> thing she did. I got I got a little scare this weekend because I was my wife and I were babysitting my granddaughter. And for a moment, she reminded me of a Republican. She, we have toys here and the toys were everywhere. Toys were everywhere. So she and my wife went back into the bedroom, tried to get her to lay down and watch Bluey on TV or whatever. And it's real quiet. So I'm out here. I'm picking the stuff up, putting it away. And then. She comes out and she's running around doing whatever. Then my wife comes out and uh, my wife says to uh, Judy, she says, oh, did you clean all this stuff up, Judy? She goes, yep, yep, I did. (laughs) I'm going, there's a fucking Republican. There's a goddamn Republican. We got to talk to this girl because she is... uh... But, but but you're absolutely right. You know, they fight against this stuff for perception's sake. They know it's good because after they tout it and it's good for those people. But you would think that people would be smart enough to see what they're doing. And that could only hurt them in, in the in the, in the election. Th- this is what's surprising me, too, about Republicans. They're very. Uh, immediate gratification. They're all about now. They don't think in the future. Like Donald Trump saying, I have total immunity. Right. He's thinking about, I'm getting out of it because I got total immunity. He's not considering the fact that then Joe Biden's got total immunity and can have him assassinated by SEAL Team 6. He doesn't think about that. Everything that Republicans have done, <laughs> it can be shoved back in their face and they never give it a thought. Never give it a thought. They don't plan ahead at all. It's like, it's like a, it's like a child with ADHD, which is pretty much what Donald Trump is. But you, you, you would think people would understand how this game is played, and they just don't fucking get it. No, nah, they don't. You don't. And that with you, what you just said, there's too many stupid people that. Uh, you think they can think rationally and they can't. And it's just, it, it, it it's, it's sad. It's really kind of sad. sad. It's a sad thing. Cause I, I went to a, I went to a Facebook page where there's some of my, you know, former high school mates are on it. And a lot of them are Trump fucks. And I go into a conversation and I see the things they're saying. I go, didn't we figure out this was bullshit like about a year ago and they're still yelling about it. And immediately I want to step in there and start saying some shit. But it's pointless. It's pointless. Some people are just too stupid. One guy did call me out one time and I said, look, Bob, I've known you for 50 years. I've talked to you many times. But based on what I've seen so far and the things you've written about Donald Trump, 
I mean this with all good intentions, but you're just too stupid to talk to. I, I can't talk to you because you're too fucking dumb. And you know what? He took offense to that. What the hell? What a sensitive guy. <laughs> it was you're an asshole. And I go, noted <laughs> and heard it before. So. Noted. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Ooh. Any, any, anyway, uh, uh, Matt, let's just take a quick break and we'll come back and talk about some of the other things that are coming up because there's all kinds of stuff plan for this week it's going to be a busy one we'll we'll take a quick break and uh we'll be right back We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Matt from Ohio is with us. We're talking about any number of things. There's a lot of things in the offing, especially this week. Uh, as I was saying uh, off the air, the clock is kind of ticking on a couple of things. And it's interesting. We know that uh, Donald Trump is in some deep shit financially. He owes E. Jean Carroll $83 million. He owes the state of New York uh $550 million, over a half a billion dollars, and the clock is ticking on that. Every day there's interest of... Plus anywhere. interest every day. Yeah, $111,000, $112,000, something like that every day. Uh, that 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 adds up to like, uh, uh, what, a million dollars every week and a half, maybe, something like that. That's That's stacking up pretty quickly, but... But there is a there is a time sensitivity to, to all this thing. Um, he had 30 days from when the uh, uh, 83 million dollar thing was signed, and that was a couple of weeks ago at least. And uh, 30 days from this one for New York is signed, which was last week. So we could be two weeks away from 83 million, and three weeks away from uh, the 550 million. It's interesting. I don't know if you'd noticed that Donald Trump recently tried to get some kind of stay or delay on the $83 million one. And he also tried to do that. He tried to delay the signing of that verdict uh, with the big one from New York. He's scrambling here right now because he doesn't have a lot of options to pay this. 30 days, you pay it or shit starts getting liquidated. I don't think he's going to come up with it, to be perfectly honest with you. No, there's no. Nobody wants to lend him money because he doesn't pay anybody back. It's well established. Uh, you're trying to go back to the judge. You've just been ragging on and talking shit about the entire time, like some little kid that you know, fell in a mud puddle and he's not getting clean clothes right away. And, right. you know, he just told you to, no, you think I'm going to hand you a favor after the way you've been talking about me and my staff and running your mouth. And then you bring this stupid Lena Baba Habba bitch in here and thinks <laughs> she knows what she's talking about and she doesn't have a clue. Oh, that poor woman. Get out of here. That poor woman's life is going to be destroyed. Yeah, that poor woman's life is going to be destroyed. She's not going to have a career. She's going to be an embarrassment forever. Um, uh, every time somebody she fucks gets up, what's coming to her, I don't feel bad for her at all. Yeah, no, I don't really feel bad for her either. But every time somebody fucks up, they're just going to say, "I Alina Haba that shit," because that's pretty much what it is. Everything she does fucks it up. But, <laughs> uh, but we're talking about six hundred million dollars in less than 30 days that he's got to come up with. And and what people have to understand is, well, he'll appeal it. But in order to do that, he has to put up the bond or the money and put it in essentially an escrow account. But it's not just the money. It's the money plus 20%. 20% of a half a billion is 100 million. So <laughs> now it's up six, 700 million, and it's going to grow continually. Uh, some people say Russia, Saudi Arabia, or Elon Musk, or somebody's going to give them the money. And my question to that is, why would they? I think people think that Vladimir Putin and Donnie are best buddies, or the crown prince are best buddies. 
Well, a half a billion dollars is a lot of fucking money. And uh, you got to have a way to get it back or get something in return. And Donald Trump doesn't have anything. He's not the president anymore. He doesn't have any money. His power is going away. Nobody, whether they love Donald Trump or not, would do that in their right mind because they can only lose. They're certainly not going to get it back from Donald when when his appeal doesn't work. Yeah, that appeal is gonna gonna really set him sideways, and then um, or no appeal, I should say, but uh, the or no immunity, but the uh. Russians not going to give him any money. No, they don't have a. They don't trust him anymore. If they do, they're just as stupid as he is. And then, you know, somebody brought up, well, what about the two billion that uh, Kushner got? Why doesn't his son-in-law and daughter just fork him the money? Because they want that money back. It was an investment. And yeah. They haven't done shit with it. You think they're just going to hand it to Daddy and then go back to Saudi Arabia and be like? Oh, we lost uh, half of that. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing. The crown prince said in an interview, if Donald Trump doesn't get reelected, they're probably going to take the money back, which tells you the only reason the money was given in the first place is to have influence with the president of the United States, which, I don't know, sounds a little illegal to me. Yeah, just a little bit. I mean, you have to wonder. And then uh, I saw an awesome video the other day. Uh, one of the big higher name golfers, Phil Mickelson, has yeah, joined yeah. the Live Golf Tour instead of the PGA. He's taken the the Saudi blood money, right? Yeah. So he stands up to a tee box. He's getting all getting all worked up, ready to hit this this golf ball. And everybody stops clapping. And then one guy goes, yeah, do it for the Saudi Prince family and starts call golfing real loud. He backed right off from that ball and had to, had to gather himself and not be all pissed off and try and take the next shot. Well, that, you know, I don't know if they all play on Trump's courses, but that's just another sick, twisted money grift yeah. operation that, Shouldn't even have happened. And then that PGA said, not the grand poobah. No, we're not dealing with that. We're not going to do that. Now they're all playing together. So it's yeah, it's, it's one more sad thing that everybody just has to look at, kind of ignore what behind the scenes of it is. Well, it's, it's more rich people just shitting on everybody else, acting as if they're elites and they can do whatever they want. But in terms of this money situation, and because it's so eminent, and it's virtually in, unavoidable. It's going to hurt him in so many ways. I tend to think that this, at least to date, the most damaging thing, and it will be devastating to Donald Trump when that money comes out of his pocket one way or another, or they liquidate his properties. Uh, this is going to be the most devastating thing to Donald Trump's well-being. I mean, he has to continue with this confident uh, bluster and bullshit but that's going to be hard when you're scrambling for money just to cover fucking rent on the places you run or own. And and uh, every time he turns around, there's it, whatever he can't pay or can't cover through liquidation, it's going to come out of his ass every month for the rest of his fucking life. This is going to follow him around for a long time. And there are more lawsuits coming, too. Yeah, this isn't the end of it by a long shot. Um, who's the who's the prosecutor? Is it Lachissa James that just came down with all of this? Uh, the New York Attorney General is Letitia James. Yeah, she's the one. And she's the one that uh, says, what are you going to do if he doesn't pay you? And all she says is apparently the building she works in, the judicial building, is right next to a Donald Trump building. And she says, all I can tell you is Yeah, he mocked day. her one day saying she doesn't even know what Trump Tower looks like. And she's like, you fucking idiot. I work right next to it. And then that's yeah. the one she brought up. No, I'm she, looking right at 40 Wall Street or whatever. 40 Wall Street. Yeah, that's a different building. But, uh, <laughs> it's one of his buildings. And uh, yeah, he got knocked down pretty quickly with that. But when that starts coming apart at the seams, 
he's going to have a hard time holding it together. Um, but he's going to get more volatile, I think. And it's, it's, it ultimately will destroy him, but it is a dangerous time for this country as long as people continue to follow the things he's say, because he's already kind of. Well, that's, and that's the part of it too. This is all just money right now. This is all right. just, uh, you know, fines and trying to pay this, trying to pay that. And the second he feels like he's got a little bit of leeway, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go to this primary or that primary, you got 34 felony charges that are about to spring on your ass in another yeah. three and a half weeks. So sit tight, Donnie, just sit tight. Well, and we know through the polling that when people, even in those polls that say Donald Trump is winning, which I think is absolutely ridiculous, it's not true, I don't trust polls, but in those polls, they ask the question, what happens if he gets convicted? And uh, that changes everything. He loses, Joe Biden wins easily. And the fact of the matter is we're talking one case, the Manhattan case, the, the, the least dangerous case for him. But as you said, there's 34 felony charges. Al, Alvin Bragg has a, a conviction record of about 98%. You can't tell me there isn't at least one right. conviction, probably 15 convictions in that, in that first trial. And that's why I'm saying everybody's worried about all the other trials. But after you take away every penny he has and, char and and convict him of even 10 felonies, he's fucking done. I mean, how much how much more can you take from him other than putting him in jail for the next five years or 10 years and take all his money? All these other court cases will just be piling on and maybe not get any resolution to it ultimately because he'll be sitting in jail already. Yeah, he'll be sitting in jail thinking I could have just stayed out all this and I would have been fine. And then, uh, you know, his cellmate's going to be uh, Mike Pillow right there yeah. with him after <laughs> his troubles come down on him. And then uh, and then he's going to, you know, all these things that he does have, If she, say she takes 40 Wall Street and that ain't enough because they're going to wholesale that piece of shit. And then they take his... Uh, Trump Tower. This hotel in Vegas that doesn't have a casino in it, probably one of few that does not because he already fucked that up. So then they're going to take that. But then I, I'm with Ed. I want him to take that damn plane. <laughs> I want to see him sell that plane off to somebody. That's an old plane. That he doesn't like for pennies on the dollar. What people have to understand is the way I pictured Donald Trump is you're on a snowy hill. He's standing at the bottom and you got a snowball rolling down the hill, getting bigger every fucking inch. And there's no way out. That snowball is going to hit you and you're not going to survive right. it. And that's where Donald Trump is right now. And what we're seeing with the March 25th uh, 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 trial and the, uh, um, the, the, the money, the fines and taking all of his money, because he's literally, if he isn't broke by the time this is done, he is going to be so um, hamstrung, he won't be able to do anything. I mean, certainly not run his companies. Secondly, he won't be able to run a campaign. He won't be able to pay his legal fees. This fucking ends everything for him if these two things happen sim or consecutively and that's what it looks like it's going to do he's going to have to come up with the money like a day or two before the trial so as soon as he can't come up the money and and he's he's doing whatever he's doing then he's going to start a trial for uh 34 felony charges from this point till november he he's the only thing he can hope for is that one day he won't be as fucked as the last day but it'll be to no avail because it's going to get worse every day that's when the snowball's going to hit him and knock him on his ass and take the wind out of his lungs and then he'll think he's all right he might survive it and stand up but then you know florida or georgia is going to come down on him and it's like you're just done. He's going to be a shriveled old man that just, he, 
he's already not there. So I I can't wait to see what he spews when all this shit's done and over with. And he's not, he does something to weasel out some sort of sentences at one time. You know, it's just, what were you I don't know. I used to get pissed off when I had an overdraft fee of $32 and then yeah. try and grovel to the bank, you know, and like, hey, this happened and this happened. Can you cut me some slack and maybe, you know, type in your little computer and see what you can do for me? And it's just, I mean, times a billion. That's what this asshole's going through. And it's like, yeah, it's oh, a, man. It's, a, it's absolutely ridiculous. And when you get, uh, you know, over my lifetime, I've had those moments where financial times were tough and it seems like, you know, you, you have the financial times that are tough. So then you uh, steal from P Peter to pay Paul and you're going back and forth and it just gets worse and worse, you know, whether you're making overdrafts and you have to pay the extra 30, but I got to pay the light bill now. So I'll just pay the extra 30 and then it just gets worse and fucking worse until you can extract yourself from that. But Donald right. Trump doesn't have any opportunity to do that. He's not going to have more income. His grifting is 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 a problem. I mean, he's already in desperation to the point where he wants his daughter-in-law to run the RNC because he can figure he figures he can siphon money off the RNC. Big problem there. RNC doesn't have any money either. They're at eight million dollars. They're already the sucked up. How, they got eight million to spread through the country to give to people running. For the next eight, nine, nine months? Yeah, that's uh, a little thin. That's, that ain't shit. No, no. And that's, they have no yeah. prospect of getting yeah, more. They're nice. You know, everything that's going on is is working against them. So there aren't many people that are motivated by saying, oh, hell shit, yeah, I'll give you more money. You know, it's like with Donald Trump. Um, nobody wants to fund a loser. We saw that with Mitch McConnell in some of those Senate races. There were some people he didn't support because he knew they were going to lose. Why spend good money after uh, good money after bad money? And uh, not only is there very few places that they're going to feel confident, they just don't have the money. They're not fundraising enough. And big surprise, it's because they've done everything to fuck over people. And now it's coming home to roost. And this this is why this next eight months is going to be just hell for Republicans, especially Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, they better start pumping out them shoes as quick as everybody wants to buy them. <laughs> I have to laugh because they I might don't know. get some money from that. Yeah, well, they only they only sold a thousand pairs so they could say it sold out. But the shoes aren't even, the shoes aren't even made yet. But did you? I had to laugh. It's it was hilarious on that that news clip I saw, where this shiny young Republican guy says, "Did you see what Donald Trump did? Absolute genius." <laughs> he said he's selling tennis shoes now, and now he's going to get all the black votes because you know black people like tennis shoes. Jesus Christ, how tone deaf do you have to be? That is one of the more indirectly racist things i've ever utterly heard. tone deaf you have to be insanely tone deaf and then the the one clip i saw was a dude was on the street talking to just you know whoever was walking by him and he had a picture of trump shoes and he's like well what do you think about these and he goes man that looked like some shit that came out in 2008 or nine and <laughs> they're spray painted and then this other guy says what if you got mugged and you were wearing these shoes? He goes, ain't nobody going to take them shoes. Those are like anti-mug repellent. Yeah, you don't want to get and mugged? Then, yeah, get Trump and shoes. it's just over and over. Ain't nobody fucking with them shoes. Yeah, it, it, it it's all... I mean, shoes, It's pitiful. Shoes. Shoes. It's pitiful. Shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Well, uh, we just well, sit back and laugh. And then, you know, there's people that are going to spend their money on that shit. It's terrible. Well, well, the even funnier part of that, in addition to those shoes, he's selling cologne. Imagine that. A man who's known for horrid stench around him is selling perfume so you can smell just like him. We're going to have an entire Trump lafuck. Uh, you want to smell like smell. a broke ass bitch? Dry some, try some Trump cologne. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I suggested the names for the cologne would be either flop sweat or diarrhea, because uh, that's about all he's got. It, it's just, it's truly, truly amazing. I'm looking forward to it, and and uh, as we get closer to the deadlines for Donald Trump, he's going to get more and more antsy. He's going to try everything. He's going to try delays. None of them are working. He's he he is truly at that point where he's painted in a corner and there is literally no way out. And that's why I tell people, watch this. And I know you want the immediate gratification of the hammer dropping on Donald Trump. But I want you to sit back and enjoy the next couple weeks while he's squirming and he's squirming hard because he knows his very financial life is hanging by the thinnest thread. It's going to be entertaining watching how he reacts and how he deals with the situation. It's not going to go well. No, not at all. And I'm actually interested on how, uh, I guess the next primary is Michigan. Tuesday. Now there's a hell of a lot more democratic Tomorrow. power in Michigan than there is in South Carolina. Let's yeah. be honest. And, uh, they're already hurting as far as the Republican side of the state. They don't, I don't think they have a, an actual Republican. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but there's just all kinds of shit going on in Michigan. And he's supposed to, it'll just be interesting. Well, you got, see people, how it goes. You got people in Mich Michigan that were the fake electors that got indicted. So yeah, they got a lot of pro Republicans. And he just said that, Tonight or Saturday, the auto workers are behind him. <laughs> Who are you talking about? The ones that already endorsed Biden or the ones that weren't even auto workers? You handed them free signs and you were at a non-union shop talking shit. Yeah. So I don't I don't know where this is coming. The only reason why he said that is because he said it before, it popped into his feeble little mind again, and he just blurted it out. You know, people are really starting to talk about this now, about Donald Trump's <clears throat> cognizance or his uh, mental acuity. They always will want to talk about Joe Biden. And somebody explained it best to me uh, th that I heard that was the best explanation. Joe Biden is slower than he always ever was because he's got an aging mind. Donald Trump is an aging mind, but also a demented mind. And the behaviors he's displaying and the symptoms he's showing are classic dementia. And and I got to think this kind of pressure and, and this kind of situation just fuels that dementia. It's got to. It has to. It's got to be eating on them. And, you know, Adderall ain't helping that either. And staying up till 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and getting on your social troth sensual that you called it. And, uh, you know, it's not, you're, you're not even taking care of yourself physically. So how can they think this dude's going to be around well, <laughs> mentally here soon? It's just it's astonishing. Yeah. Biden's slow, but so what? Well, yeah, you know, it's, he'll uh, give you the straight answer. He'll give you the right answer. He knows what he's doing. Just might take them a little bit longer, but so what? Yeah, it's it, the the crash has to come for Donald Trump. You can't, you know, you're a young guy, and 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 if you had to go through, we talked about this last time. If you had to take the pressure that's on his head right now, and somebody taking away all your money, you'd lose your shit. And he's seventy seven, seventy eight, and he's going to be not a very healthy guy mentally or physically. He's just not going to be able to take it. I mean, his life is being torn apart and destroyed. How does he handle that? You you can talk shit. You can lie and say, oh, it's, you know, Alina Haba came out after they made the decision on how much he was going to be fined. And, and uh, she says, this will never stand. We'll get this taken care of. Donald Trump's the most powerful guy. Bitch, the verdict has just been revealed. It's not like you get another chance. Although, <laughs> although right. one, of, one of his lawyers went to the judge and said, listen, man, uh, why don't you give us a minute so we can come up with a counter verdict? 
a counter verdict. Yeah, that ain't, that isn't how it works. You're thinking big business. No. A verdict is a verdict. You can't come and say, well, how about if I pay this much? No, you're paying this much because that was the fucking verdict. And this, this is all starting to weigh heavily on him. And his lawyers have got to be thinking, God, we've been, we've been doing everything we can to keep Donald Trump sane, but there's too many balls in the air now. We can't do it anymore. I think you'll probably see some lawyers bolt because they just don't want to deal with the situation. Yeah, there's just he won't even be able to find one, and if he does, it's the guy's been or gal has been paid up front, and they're just trying to get their name out there, and that's what Baba did. And now look how stupid she looks. She could she could have sat this out and ignored it, and now nah, that this is a little too much for me, and probably been just fine, but she screwed herself too. I think Alina Baba is better suited rather than a lawyer, better suited being a makeup influencer on TikTok. Maybe if she can get a couple thousand people, she can make a, a little money on the side because she's certainly not a fucking lawyer. And uh, she's not going to be a lawyer when this is all said and done. She might herself get some sanctions for some of the crazy shit she did in that court case. It wouldn't surprise me. She walked right into it. She blurred. She opened her mouth just like he does, and it's probably shit that he told her to say, and she's going right along with it. And there you go. Yeah. Now, no, we've got this immunity thing, and every week I think, okay, this is the week we're going to come back and get a decision from um, from the Supreme Court. And the funny thing about it is, is that Donald Trump didn't ask them to decide on whether he has immunity or not. He asked them to just stay it, put a pause on it. And it's been a while and people are getting a little nervous that it's taking long for for them to respond to this. And and frankly, we could save a lot of shit if they just did their job and say, no, stay, let's let's go. Um, but Donald Trump is still trying to mm. use the immunity thing down in Florida He's trying to get her to dismiss the case because he has total immunity. What, what, what are you thinking with the uh, Supreme Court? Do you think we're going to get an answer pretty quick? It almost has to be. It's. I would think this week or next week. They've already heard what they need to hear. They just need to make a decide. And like Maggie said, you know, they're probably looking for any off ramp they can. Well, here's your perfect one. Yeah, this, this seems like the obvious one to take an off-ramp because they're going to get their hands dirty on that 14th Amendment. We don't even know how that's going to turn out. Um, but they don't need two, uh, uh, two red herrings to deal with. They're going to look bad no matter what they do on the 14th Amendment. Either MAGA will hate them or the rest of the country will hate them. Uh, so they can't win on that situation. Uh, but, but, but the immunity thing is an easy decision. He doesn't get immunity. And the thing is, he hasn't asked them to appeal it. He's just saying, we got to get an appeal together, so just pause it. See, he's trying to delay it more instead of asking for the appeal right. and getting the stay. He wants to add a little extra time. This this whole strategy of delaying is has worked for a long time, but now it's now it's closing in on him because you're just delaying the inevitable here. You're, you're, you're going to uh, have to face up to it at some point, and Donald Trump's just not willing to do it. But time has clicked away, and now he's going to have to face up to it. If he doesn't get this claim of immunity approved, he's got no defense on any of his trials at all. He thinks he's got immunity. He doesn't. Actually, not so much in the Manhattan trial, because a lot of that happened before he was president, so he can't claim immunity on that one in the Manhattan district. That's why he's fucked there. But all the other ones, he wants to be immune. I'm hoping Jack Smith asked him and said, well, if you're just going to check and see whether uh, you're going to pause it, why don't you just decide whether you would even hear it? So it'll be interesting if this time the uh, Supreme Court takes Jack's advice. Hopefully they will. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, 
you know, when you when you can get away with delaying contractors and people you don't want to pay or probably employees suing you for whatever reason. Yeah. That's when you can get away with it. But when you're trying to delay the Supreme court of the United States or the federal government, it's only going to go so long. It's only going to last for a little bit. It ain't going to, you're not just going to hope and sit back and let them. Yeah, you're right. Let's just, it's it's all right. Enough time has passed. You'll be fine, or whatever he's hoping for. I don't know, but well, I think there's a lesson about his. Uh... Oh. I think Go there's ahead. a le- I think there's a lesson that people should pay attention to because when this all started with Donald Trump and the investigations and the indictments and all this stuff, I kept hearing, of of course, from Republicans and Trump LaFox, oh, nothing's ever going to happen to him. They aren't going to touch him. Donald Trump's a billionaire. He's the most powerful guy. Nothing's going to happen to him. But I continue to hear from Democrats, and I still do this day, oh, nothing is going to happen to Donald Trump. Well, since the start of this, a lot of shit has happened to Donald Trump unprecedented shit right uh a president getting indicted four times from four different jurisdictions um the trials the lawsuits all of this shit uh to suggest nothing's going to happen to donald trump well i'm sorry a lot has happened to him uh enough that would bury most people he's just lucky because he has a platform and because he has some money but uh, even he can't avoid the steamroller that's the one thing you learn when you get older. If the government wants to get you, they're going to fucking get you. Doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to talk your way out of it. Donald Trump was fine in his own little realm in business because he had power and yes men. But he got into an arena that's much bigger than he is. And now he's fucking around and finding out because there is no stopping the government, especially when they're right. Look around and find out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be an interesting week when we uh, um, when we um, get through it. We'll be talking about it all week. Matt, I want to thank you for for, for coming on and, and uh, spending some time. It's always good to get a younger person's perspective. Uh, I'd love to have my kids on the show sometime to get their perspective, but they don't want to talk to me about this shit. So I thank you for... Uh, being kind of a surrogate of uh, the generation of my kids. Cause you, you, you're the people that are going to have to deal with uh, the wreckage that's left over after this whole period. And uh, hopefully you won't have to clean up too yeah. much. Hopefully we'll be able to get it cleaned up, but um, this is, this has got to, this has got to make uh, somebody of your age a little more nervous because you've got kids and you've got a future and you've got a job and a wife and all this stuff and a house. Uh, I'm just an old guy sitting in my my condo uh, with the life is pretty well set for whatever I have left of it. Um, so for me, I'm more concerned about the young people, my kids, my grandkids and all this stuff. Uh, as much as we old people are upset about it, the real pressure is on people like you of your generation and younger. I'll tell you the middle class, uh, Joe helped us out a lot by, you know, sticking up for us the way he has yeah, and passing the things that he has. And, you know, when he's reelected, he's just going to keep going. And I'll throw this out there, the whole wave you know, red wave, red wave. And now we're calling it a blue. Let's call it a blue monsoon. Yeah. Because that's what's coming. It is coming. That's what's coming. And And if all three phases are blue, I mean, you watch things turn around quicker than shit. Yeah. There's going to be some dramatic changes in this country. And I think it'll be for the better. Uh, I think you got to be patient. It's going to be difficult between now and the election. It's going to be, in spite of the fact that it's going to be a blue wave, I'm convinced of that. There will be people biting their nails come November 5th. But once it's all done, you'll look back at this, you'll sigh, uh, 
make a sigh of relief and things will get better. They always get better. As somebody who's been around a while, I've seen the bad times. It does get better. This one will get better, but we still got to keep fighting on it. And I appreciate somebody of your age with plenty of other things to do, willing to stand up and, and speak out too, because to me, that's important that we always always have some somebody pushing back. Yeah, of course. That's what, uh, that's what rational minds do, I guess. <laughs> So they say, so they say, all right, uh, Matt, thank so you. They say. Uh, Matt, thank you very much for uh, stopping in and doing the show with me. I'm looking forward to this week. Uh, Matt will be back, of course. And uh, maybe if you talk real sweet and I promise to be nice, maybe we can get your wife on the show at some point. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. I can try to get her on here. I know she said hi to you, but uh... she did. She did. Um, and uh, yeah. it was a pleasure to meet her. All right. We're, we're going to wrap well, things up. Thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we're going to wrap things up. And uh, uh, for those of you listening, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to do that. Hope you have a great day. And uh, we will top, talk to you again tomorrow.